Right. Uh, so uh, what I'm uh, going to present today is about how to create parameter forms for your SAS jobs uh, using SAS via uh, SAS Studio and SAS uh, Visual Analytics. And uh, just to give you kind of a, a brief background about the topic, so basically like uh, I, I uh, am working as a customer advisor uh, at SAS and uh, be, uh, focusing more on the retail and CPG domain. And uh, more often we come with a problem uh, which most of our customers face is scenario analysis. And uh, scenario analysis is something which is uh, which is an important part of decision making. And it can always be a challenge to create an interface where uh, you can provide your business users uh, to run your scenarios on your models. And uh, this problem is actually solved using uh, the SAS via job execution service, which allows you to create interfaces to run your model, whether it's in SAS, whether it's in R, Python, or any API, all with relatively little coding. So, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, sorry for the trouble. My presentation got hung. All right. So, uh, today's presentation uh, it will be split into two parts. So, in the part one, I will be talking more about the basics of the SaaS uh, via job execution service. And uh, basically, I will be uh, uh, taking you along uh, on how to create the jobs, how to work with job parameters, and then how uh, we can create like HTML or some prompts in XML. And uh, in the next part, I will just show you like a live example of, of how scenario analysis can be done using SAS Visual Analytics. So let's get started. So uh, <clears throat> whenever we are whenever we are implementing scenario analysis in SAS via, your code needs to do these three things. So the number one is if your code uh, needs to modify your data, then secondly, it needs to score it. And finally, it needs to load it into the CAS. No matter uh, what language you are using, it can be either of SAS, it can be R, it can be Python. If if your code is doing all these three things, you can run a scenario. Now, uh, this is a, a procedure which uh, where you would like to give it to your business users, or basically you want the other people to run your scenario. Then uh, you need to get it out there to them. And how you can do it uh, is using the SAS uh, via job execution service. So basically the job execution service is a SAS code that runs the other code and it doesn't matter what your other code is. It could be your SAS code, it could be R code, it could be Python, it could be an API that you call. As long as uh, all these programs or all these codes are doing the three basic things, other people can also run your scenario. So in a nutshell, you can we can say that uh, the job, uh, the via job execution service is nothing more than a URL that your business user can access on the via server and and they can run uh, and and they can run and it's a SAS code which they can run. So uh, basically uh, they can modify the URL to make the code do other stuff. And they can do that using the job input parameters. So in this particular example, uh, and uh, yeah, so just to tell you like job input parameters are uh, user defined values that translate into macro variables. And uh, let's say uh, we have a job input parameter, which is date. And a user goes to the job uh, execution URL, runs a program by the name my job, in uh, as you can see in this example, 
and uh, then they can change the date parameter within it. So for example, here the user has set the date parameter to 1st January 2020. Then uh, this is how uh, you will be modifying your data. Yeah. So this is all uh, great and everything, but how to make it simple? How to give it like a uh, more GUI interface uh, for your business users? And this actually is possible using the job forms and HTML interfaces. So basically uh, here, uh, it's it's an example taken from SAS Visual Analytics where uh, you can see a form that has been displayed, which where you can feed uh, your job some input parameters in the GUI, and uh, you can click your job, uh, submit your job, and then it will execute the job in the background and you can run your scenario analysis. So basically uh, the job forms can be linked and displayed in a visual analytics web content object. Now, uh, just some basics about how to create the jobs and to work with the job parameters. So first of all, uh, we uh, need uh, to go to SAS Studio version 5 or higher. And uh, First step is to change the perspective from uh, to standard. If you are not in a standard mode, you will not be able to edit and work with jobs. Second, if you want to create your own job, you uh, simply have to go to new, go to the job, go to the definition, and this will open up uh, directly take you to the code where you can uh, either fill in your uh, another scoring codes which are already present using the include uh, function. If you have your uh, scoring codes in Python or R, then you can use like X and put it your uh, scoring code. So this is just one way to do it. Other way is you can also directly code inside this code box, which we will uh, uh, see in a minute. Now uh, the next part is uh, once we have uh, created the code, uh, we can also add some parameters. And uh, these are uh, basically the macro variables which we will define and uh, to modify our job. So uh, some of the special job parameters are uh, number one is underscore action. Uh, it actually uh, tells uh, the job URL to, what to do after accessing it. So, uh, and it can accept multiple co uh, comma separated values. The another one is output type. It displays to the user what type of uh, graphics do we want to see? Should, uh, should it be a web page? Should it be a ODS graphics? And the third one is uh, underscore debug, and it displays the SAS log after the job runs. Then uh, just ex uh, explaining uh, one of the job parameter in a bit more detail, action. So action can take in like multiple values, and uh, first value here, uh, what it can, it can take is like the form. Uh, when uh, the user puts form uh, action is equals to form, then it uh, as soon as the job is executed, it displays an input form for the user before running the job. Then uh, if the user has uh, uh, given the value weight, then uh, it will display an animated waiting page while the job is running. And then the third one is execute. It will run the job after the user submits the job uh, or accesses the URL. So uh, with this, let's go uh, and see one of the live examples. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is a visual analytics dashboard, uh, which I recently created for one of our customers. And uh, in this particular scenario, uh, there is a retail company where the where warehouse uh, workforce is getting automat automatized. And owing to the warehouse automation, 
uh, there is a change in the requirement of the unskilled workers, semi-skilled workers and the skilled workers. And uh, these are something which you can see uh, in in the constraints window over here. So you have like uh, different types of uh, constraints for these type of workers. So uh, how many uh, workers leave in the first year? How many leave in the second year? What is the overmanning cost? And then what is the cost per employee of short time work, et cetera? Uh, and uh, our bus business problem here was uh, how to optimize uh, the resources such that uh, the redundancy cost and uh, the such that the total redundant uh, uh, employee number and the cost they don't uh, vary so much. So uh, in this particular example uh, here, I am showing you a data driven object uh, where Basically, uh, we have created uh, a scenario. So let's say uh, what we want is uh, we can increase, let's say, the workforce by 10% and we would like to see the impact on the total redundancy and the cost. So you can put in your parameters here and uh, simply submit the job. Now, once you submit the job, uh, the job uh, is taken to the job execution server where it is running uh, using the parameters which we have defined. And uh, as soon as it, it is finished, uh, it will uh, just tell us uh, via message that your job is successfully run. So yeah, just let's give it a couple of seconds. And uh, there you go, the scenario reigns successfully. And to run other scenario, you can click this button and run again. Now, uh, what you can see over here is that the default uh, workforce uh, numbers and what is the real time scenario changes in the workforce when you increase it by 10%. So uh, I'm not going into detail about like uh, the business um, uh, influence of the scenario. Uh, let's go to how this has been created. So if I open the report. OK, so I've just opened the uh, VA report in a edit mode. Now. You can see uh, what I have uh, created here is a data driven content and in the data driven content I have provided it a URL. Now if we go through the URL. So here you can see that I am calling SAS job execution server. And uh, then I am calling a program which is having the name MP20. OK. And uh, so how to get this information so we can go to. So whatever is your environment, if it's uh, just copy your environment and change the last part into SAS job execution. So this will actually take you to a place where from where you can access all your SAS studio files. OK, and. For example, here uh, this is the job that was being called in the scenario. Now to get the path of this particular job from the SAS job execution server, we can go to properties and then we can go to details. And in the details, we will see what is the job submit address. This is the exact uh, URL which I have provided here into the data driven content. And now uh, coming to how to create these jobs. So to create these jobs, uh, first step is go to options, change perspective and set it to standard. This is required. Now uh, let's say we want to create a new job. Then we go to new, we go to job, we go to definition. And in definition, you will see like the code has been uh, created. On the right hand side, we have a couple of options. So we can either 
associate a form with it. So either we can associate a HTML form, we can associate a task prompt. If there is already an existing API, we can also attach it using the existing form option. Right. Uh, the next thing uh, on the right hand tab, we also have the place to define the job parameters and job parameters as explained earlier are macro variables which will change the uh, code which is running in the URL. So here you can define the name. You can define what type it is. You can define the default values. You can say if it is required, if it's if it is not required, etc. Now uh, for us for uh, this particular presentation, we already have everything defined for us. So uh, as uh, I explained earlier, like in the code, uh, you have the capability uh, either to include like uh, programs which are already there, like the scoring codes uh, directly using the included statement, or you can also write in your codes. So over here, uh, what I have done is I have defined a opt model where uh, I am uh, running the workforce automation optimization scenarios. All right. And uh, in the task prompt, uh, as you can see here, I have created a XML prompt page. Now this is exactly the prompt page. If I click uh, the run, I can see like what output will this task prompt provide me. And this is exactly the one which we saw earlier in the SAS Visual Analytics. Okay, and uh, over here uh, we can also see the parameters which I have defined. So we have defined like a couple of parameters. Like uh, here is the action. Here is uh, some some of the macro variables. Now target underscore self. So basically this uh, allows your prompts uh, to run in the same web page. And then uh, I'm defining the output type, so it's uh, displaying the output as, as a HTML and then other parameters. OK. And uh, yeah, so with this, I come to an end to my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. <laughs>